Coach, EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the Lone Star State and the very mammoth AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. Obviously, they do everything big here in Dallas, and the introduction to the Cowboys, no exception. They're set for football in Big D, as their guys will do battle. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line with Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks. This is the Oklahoma State alum, Chris Carson. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll take this one up close to the 25-yard line. On the tackle, it's Randy Gregory. Sometimes your philosophies get challenged at times you don't want them to. They did try to stick to the running game on the first two plays. Didn't amount to much. And now facing a third and long at the outset of this drive. So now an early third and ten here on their opening drive. Play action. It's Wilson. And incomplete here on third down. Anytime a defense can sit back in a zone like that, it tends to create a lot of congestion in the middle of the field. Makes it very hard to slot one in. Looked like I-4 at rush hour in your hometown of Orlando, Florida. An absolute mess. On fourth down, ready to punt Michael Dixon. Back deep is Tavon Austin. This is taken at about the 14. Oh, he shifts past him. Good blocking there, nearly sprung him. As it is, it'll go as a 19-yard return. And the Cowboys will take over the football with a first and 10. Well, partner, as the Cowboys come back out here, I want to ask you to assess the season. The first couple months of the year for Dallas, starting to look like they'd be sitting at home in January. Then the Amari Cooper trade comes. They breeze through November unbeaten, part of a five-game winning streak, but then a real head scratcher week 15 they get shut out in indianapolis you just wonder if all the wins that got them there those five which were all tough physical hard-hitting battles if it took a little bit out of them before they went on the road and lost indianapolis in week 15. but if they get to the playoffs which it looks like they're going to are they a threat to new orleans are they a threat to los angeles are they a threat to chicago to me, they are only if it's a low-scoring physical affair. That's when Dallas plays at its best, and that's what they'll have to do to reduce some of those high-flying teams like New Orleans and Los Angeles. And this one also slow and developing as he's maybe getting back here to the line of scrimmage, but not much more than that. Well, they know how to protect the pass, but sometimes cornerbacks, they can also stop the run, can't they? Is that what we call a complete corner? Yeah, because we're so used to these guys just being defenders in the pass game. How about the guys who can come up and make the tackles? That's what we just saw there for no gain, too. Looking to throw. Prescott. He's going to go deep for Beasley. And that's caught inside the 35. And he is down deep into Seattle territory. It's a big play there on third down. 53 yards. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play that picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. A real field flipper there as all of a sudden they've got a first down in the red zone. A first down carry by Elliott, and he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. Second down, Prescott. He lost four there, and it's third down. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Here 
Prescott from the gun. And this is going to be incomplete. Even without a ton of pressure in his face, it just shows how difficult it is to pick apart his own defense. Those guys are sitting back, and they're not playing receivers as much as they're playing the eyes of the quarterback and when he delivers the ball. And forthcoming, a field goal try for the Cowboys. This will be a 37-yard attempt. And his kick is right there. It's good. And the Cowboys are going to jump out to a 3-0 lead. So our initial drive of the night ends in three points. Maybe not exactly what this home crowd wanted, but they'll take the early lead. They will take it. You're exactly right. Everybody wants a touchdown. But in this case, good opening drive, put points on the board. And a lot of coaches do believe the first team to score in the game, statistically, often ends up the winner. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. Then he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. Well, Charles, the Seattle Seahawks, they were 8-5 and five going into a Week 15 game against the 49ers, a team that they had beaten 10 straight times, and then they lose that game, surprisingly, 26-23, and as they tried to carry momentum toward the playoffs, I was surprised at that outcome. I was beyond surprised. I thought that game was pretty much a lock because of the momentum Seattle was bringing in, the level of play that they were bringing, and you're taking on a team in San Francisco who's on their third quarterback. Although that young man, Nick Mullins, has acquitted himself quite well. But now, Seattle's got to sweat it out a little bit. The last couple weeks of the season, trying to get one of the two remaining wild card spots, they've got Kansas City in a primetime game before they end up in their last game of the season. So look out for Seattle, but at the same time, they've got some work to do. This is Carson. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook. Go play action. Toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down. Keep the sticks moving. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. On first and 10, it's Wilson. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. I know at times people think we use it too often, but you've got to be able to throw guys open. And when you read zone, you've got to stick it in there before your receiver gets to the next guy in the zone. Otherwise, you bring him into the play. And that's precisely what allowed that defense to disrupt the pass. Now it's Carson. And he's across the 43 extra yards to the 43. Call it a gain of four, and it'll leave him with a third down and six to go. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. Now it's Wilson. He's got the tight end, Vanette. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before you get a good head of steam going. And now here come the Cowboys. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> <laughs> not one that I've ever met. They'll run with Elliott. And able to use his blockers to get this up over the 40. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven. Leaves him with a second and three. 
a nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play caller to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they will pay dividends as the game progresses. Prescott now on second down. And this is incomplete. Amari Cooper, the intended target, and it's third and short. All right, that one fell incomplete there, but the best quarterbacks, they'll miss up 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball who's going to fail seven out of 10 times and still have a great year. In this case, you want perfection, but way better that it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite color jersey. Third and short yardage, Prescott. And that's caught by Beasley. And he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. A Dallas first down, Prescott hooking up with Beasley. Did you see that route the way that I did? I yep. thought he was trying to get deep. Yeah, that wasn't the first option. No, not the, it came off of that guy, the deep guy, and came underneath on the drag, completed it very well. Now a play fake here on first down. And the Seahawk defense gets to him and they bring him down. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. Out of the gun, here's Prescott. And incomplete there, a nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. And Charles got to like what this defense has been able to do these last couple of plays. Yeah, they get the sack on first down, then they force the incomplete pass. Now they're just a play away from getting the football right back, but it's a big play. They've got to hold up. The Cowboys on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This will be third and 19. There's Prescott. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Frank Clark in there to get him for a loss of nine, and that'll lead to fourth down. I remember when I was a kid, and all I wanted was a nickel so I could get that soda down at the fountain, and guess what? The nickel came into play well. Five defensive backs, they covered well, allowed for the sacks. Sodas were a nickel when you were a kid? No, I just needed the extra nickel so, oh. I, could pay the, so I could pay the proper price. Okay, how much were they, a dime? <laughs> what were they? Uh, 15 cents. 12 yards on the return that time, and it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. They've had it twice. They punted twice, not the start they were hoping for. Not at all, and let's face it, every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice, so they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? And he'll wind up with about six, up past the 30 to the 31. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. On second down, here's Wilson. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Even the greats in this game, and, and he certainly qualifies as one of them. They're going to have trouble if they continue to throw into double coverage. He better be careful. Throwing into too much double coverage might have a couple of them picked off. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. What? Who's the team? What? What? From the gun, it's Wilson. And this one is incomplete. And what did we talk with them about prior to the game? Their ability to move the chains, pick up first downs. So far, 0 for 3 on third down. If that continues, they'll have little chance of winning this one. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for Seattle. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And he didn't quite have the backspin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. 
They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Prescott on first down. Over the middle, Amari Cooper, it's complete. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. The completion good for three, and it's second down. I think defensively, you're okay with that. Here in the first quarter, he's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. 12 yards there as they move the chains. A good run there off right tackle in an old school NFL football. The right side of the offensive line, often known as the nasty side. The left side, usually the technical side. Kind of reminds me of the old Atlanta Falcons 2009-2010. That's how they constructed their offensive line. They keep on the ground with Elliott. And this defense not giving him anything there. Maybe a yard up to the 36. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. On second down, Elliott. And he puts his head down and gets up to the 42 for a gain of about six. All right, Brandon, I know we're in the early going here, but those kind of runs, they're going to open up a world of opportunities for this offense going forward. The Cowboys on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and four. Sitting alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, as it is Cowboy football to begin quarter number two. They'll come up on a third and four here to start things out. From the shotgun, it's Prescott. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he's got a first down as he's up to the 48. First time that they've called his number tonight, and it gets him a first down. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. They go play action here on first down. Letting one fly deep for Cooper. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. Amari Cooper, his intended receiver, and now it's second down. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down, the offense or the defense? Let's face it, if you've got the ball, Four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Now back to the ground with Elliott. And nowhere really to go there. He'll take this up just shy of midfield. One yard, the official pick up there, so it's going to set up third and nine. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? On third down, it's Prescott. Toward the sideline, did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got them both down, says the side judge, and that's good enough for a first down. That one goes for 29 yards on third down. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. A first down throw for Prescott. Over the middle, he hits Austin. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. A gain of six there on first. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed. Because you hit a guy on the run like that, 
he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. A second down throw for Prescott. That is caught at the seven yard line. And they corral him just a couple yards shy of the end zone. A solid pickup of 13 sets him up first and goal. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. Prescott yet again. And this is going to be caught? No, they say it's incomplete. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. Second and goal, and they will try again from the two-yard line. They'll try to run it in with Elliott. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. He lost two there, and it's third down. Uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. They've been denied touchdowns in the red zone twice already. Here comes third and goal. Now Prescott. And that is caught. Touchdown, Cowboys. Amari Cooper, a five-yard touchdown. And the Cowboys will add on to their lead. Such an art to dot the I, just get the feet in right there against the line before going out of bounds. Such an incredibly graceful, athletic play, but also a lot of practice goes into it. They work on that to make sure that they learn how to train their feet to get down in bounds. Extra point right down the middle, and the lead grows to 10 0. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. Yeah, some might have returned that one. He won't. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start the drive from the 25. Here come the Seahawks now, set to take over on offense. So far, they've had three drives, three punts. Not good. Not good indeed, because you've got to have something to show for being out on the field. Now, sometimes, if you have a game where neither side has scored, three punts isn't a bad thing. But when you're trying to set the pace, get up on top in a game, you've got to show better offense and find a way to put some points on the board. On first down, Wilson. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out, incomplete. Well, some news that gave us a chuckle, and we could all use that around the holiday season. Josh Johnson, a great story. He was back home in Oakland when the Redskins called to see if he'd like to join him for the remainder of the season. So how did he get to know his new teammates? Well, what did he do? He turned to the Madden game, Charles. Yeah, and that's how you learn who they are, right? Learn what they do, have some tendencies, get some ideas about their speed and what they do well, and maybe what they don't do so well. And it really helped him acclimate and got himself a big victory in week 15 against the Jacksonville Jaguars. How about the bloodline of Josh Johnson, though? Also related to Marshawn Lynch of the Oakland Raiders and Marcus Peters of the Los Angeles Rams. Pretty good company. The offense on third down tonight, 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. They're looking at third and a few inches. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. But he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far. And after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going. And really, the offensive line not helping him much. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. They keep it on the ground. This time it's Davis. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. 
Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. He didn't seem in a rush. I guess they just didn't know where the play clock was. I think you're right about that because there was no hurried movements there, right? No up-tempo at all. Clock just ran out. I think he was as surprised as maybe his bench was. They are pushed back five yards by the delay of game, second and eight. Right, 380. Off the play fake, here's Wilson. It's caught on the left side by Baldwin. That catch good for five. It's third down. Didn't they tell us in our meetings that they needed to account for him on each and every play? You think? A guy of his caliber? So how does a guy like him get that wide open? That usually means there's a tire breakdown on what the coverage was. That everyone thought they were doing something, and they were supposed to be doing something else. But bottom line is, no matter what, you have to know where he is and cover him on every play. Here's Wilson to throw. Completes it to Dixon. And he will have the first down as he gets this to the 47. His first catch, good for eight and a first down. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What do the guys in the locker room call him? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down. Now Wilson, and Dixon over the middle. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. A good pick up there, eight yards on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? <laughs> and what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. Throwing is Wilson. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. The Seahawks on third down, two for five to this point. This time they face a third and two. Cut, three for two. Cut, cut. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And a short game there down to the 37-yard line. He needed two, he got one, and that's going to leave him with fourth down of the yard. How about the fellas with the stars on the side of their helmets rising up on defense? We always hear about the Cowboys rushing offense. Their rush defense is pretty good as well, I think, because they're so cohesive. Defensive line, linebackers really work well together. That's running out of steam, and it won't get there. He left it just short. No good. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. So after the missed long field goal attempt, this offense set up nicely at the 44-yard line. They start on the ground with Elliott. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Here we go. They'll run it now out of the gun. And three yards there takes him to the 45. 
That's a really good job right there. Just kept stringing that play out, pushing further and further towards the sideline. Really good fundamentals by that defense. He was trying to put his foot in the ground and turn up field. He just couldn't. No, they really had a picket fence in front of him. No room to find to get upfield. The Cowboys on third down. They've been very good, five for seven thus far. This is third and nine. Prescott to throw it. And he's able to hook up with Michael Gallup. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line. Tackled there. His first catch, and it's a pretty big one. They get the conversion on third down. And, boy, they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did, and obviously they liked his measurables. Otherwise, they wouldn't have brought him on to the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. And Justin Coleman brings him down. What's the old expression, three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now, we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. The give is to Elliott, and he'll be taken down at the 33, a pickup of about four. If you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. A nickel look by Seattle on third down. Yep, five defensive backs now. Prescott from the gun. The ball popped in the air and intercepted. Tedrick Thompson picks it. He's at the 30, 20, and he's going to score. It's a Seahawk touchdown. Ah, oh, yes, the old tip drill works to perfection there. Ah, oh, you're bringing back great memories. You still love that drill. And a lot of times in practice, you work on it not just one tip, but multiple tips, just in case the ball stays in the air for a while, to have an awareness and the ability to go up and grab it, and then you want to get some blocking support and end up in the opposite end zone. In that tip drill, do you what do you yell? Uh, for, for, for us, it was Oski, okay? Oski was an interception. For different teams. Different teams have different ways of doing it. I've heard bingo, jackpot. The worst I ever heard, though, was Frankenstein. You don't want it to be a three-syllable word. Too many syllables, yeah. you, want, you want to get it right down and go. Oski is really the preferred word. Oski. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. Jackson now to return. He'll bring it back to just about the 25. Call it the 24-yard line. Here's the Dallas offense now heading back out onto the field and following the pick six. And they have decent field position in throwing that pick six. We'll see how they attack this drive. And I think all you say to your guy is, listen, Let's just take care of the football a little bit better. Make some better decisions on this drive, and they'll probably help him a little bit with maybe some really high percentage throws early to let him get settled back yeah, in. But they told him, and they told us, they've got confidence. That, that's not a problem. Yeah, not a problem at all. They just want to make sure they get things settled down a little bit for their offense and give their defense a little bit of a chance to rest. Now the Cowboys offense heads back onto the field. And last time, decent field position through the pick six. Obviously costly but they can't afford to just bunker in now, all right? They, good field position means go ahead and attack on offense. Try and press the advantage a little bit. They just have to be better with the football on this position. So the last one, that didn't bother you too much last time? No, because it's, it's exactly what you're supposed to do. You can't have good field position and not try to take advantage of it. Sometimes the defense makes a good play, too. Quick slant there gets him the first down, six yards on the play. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Prescott now, 10 of 16, throwing the football. It's first and 10. Prescott. He rifles one that's intercepted. Tedrick Thompson picks it, and the return comes to a halt right at the 44-yard line. That's sort of a second quarter to forget for him. Now two picks in this frame. Almost.
almost as if the first one that he threw, he couldn't shake, couldn't get it out of his head. He ends up throwing a second one as a result. Compounds the mistake a little bit. Yeah, you got to be able to forget, compartmentalize, whatever you want to call it, and move on. He hasn't been able to do so here in the second. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense, when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? Creates a lot of confusion, kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you can go make a play on the football. Second and ten now, Wilson. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Baldwin. First down, Seahawks. Wilson to Baldwin. From the 32 now, here's first and ten. On first down, it's caught, lock it, and he'll go down at the 28. The completion good for three, and it's second down. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Again, Wilson. They'll set up the screen with Davis. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. An inaugural trip to the red zone here for the Seahawks. They've got a first and 10 at the 15. Throwing again here, Wilson. Baldwin with it over the middle. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. That throw good for four. It's second down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. To throw again is Wilson. And oh, not only did he drop it, he dropped it in the end zone. Well, it's easy to see when we review this that the ball needs to come out quicker because if you don't throw it right on the break, you bring a crowd of people into the equation. And that's why it got knocked away there. They missed a field goal on their last drive. Here they need something to even get into field goal range on third down. On third down, Wilson. Pressure comes and Wilson's going to go down. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the first half. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. This from 36 yards out. And Janikowski bangs it through, and that will tie things up as we head toward halftime. 
Well, maybe a nice psychological boost there just to get back to even with that field goal as we head towards half. Coaching 101 always says at halftime, play it like it's 0-0 on the scoreboard. Well, in this case, it's level, right? Same score each side. Just start over. Now you've got the second half to play. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. This fielded at the two. And he'll take this across the 25. Couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. The Cowboys offense heading back out and ready to go again. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. They'll start the drive with Elliott. And room to run as he's up past the 35-yard line. And we're going to get a timeout. With two seconds remaining in the second quarter, the offense for the Cowboys now working their way back onto the field. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. Final play of the half, Prescott. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. So thanks to the late field goal, we are all tied up heading to intermission. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. This is fielded at the goal line. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Out come the Cowboys now as he'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They have a chance to break our tie here as we get a look at the first drive of quarter three. And it's such a tone setter, isn't it? Because both sides trying to seize momentum to begin the half. What do they have dialed up that'll give them an advantage to move the ball downfield? Let's find out what they have dialed up. Second half starts with a carry by Elliott. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. He has elite instincts from his linebacker spot. He's able to diagnose the run and flies in like a missile to stop that one behind the line of scrimmage. For the first play of the drive, lost four. Now they'll look to move it forward here on second and 14. Another carry tonight for the workhorse alley. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of two, now third down. So statistically, both of these offenses having a rough time getting a running game going. But boy, what a nice play there defensively. Tackling him behind the line, but you're right. You look at the numbers. Neither side looks on track in the ground game. Third and long for Prescott. And that's caught by Beasley. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. A gain of 26 on the third down conversion. Give to Elliott, and he'll be brought down at the 50 after a gain of about five. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Again, it's Elliott. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. We'll give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. 
At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. So after a good run by Zeke, another first and 10. First down, Prescott. That's into the hands of Gallup over the middle. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. And just a small glimpse there as to why they like this rookie so much. And that's why they lit up a little bit in our meetings with the coaching staff. Didn't yeah, they? when we talked about him, they did. Yeah, yeah, you know, they like his work ethic. You know, this guy's running every route well in the route tree and getting better at it all the time, really honing his game. They expect a pretty good jump out of him as things continue to move on. Now a play fake here on first down. And he's wrapped up, taken down, back at the 25. Frank Clark in there to drop him for his second sack now here tonight. No doubt that's a very good play defensively right there because you've always got to be aware that he can take off and make a big play with his legs. How about the way they were able to contain him? That also tells me the coverage was excellent downfield. A 20th carry here for Elliott. <laughs> And they'll get this down to the 10. It's a really nice 15-yard pickup, and now it's first and goal. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other bats in the league. And a short pickup there down to about the nine. Only a yard on the pickup there. Second and goal. Defensively, pretty good start there with their backs against the wall. That's a win for the stop troops right there. And if I'm them, I get a little bolder now. They won the first battle. Keep coming after them. Put the pressure on them. And the ball situated at the nine. Second and goal. From the shotgun, it's Prescott. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Cowboy touchdown. Amari Cooper, his second touchdown of the night. And the Cowboys have broken the tie. I know we often laugh, and sometimes we even insult the guys who are great trash talkers and give us some really funny lines. But the bottom line is absolute production on the field. His second touchdown of the game, and they lead. And now they'll be looking to their defense to preserve that lead. Point after, right down the middle. And that makes it a 17-10 score. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here comes the Seahawks offensive unit. They'll have it first to begin the third. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the time. How many time. plays do you script coming out of the second most, half? Most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10. Kind of a starter or an opener, whatever they whatever terminology they use. Just something to get you off to a quick start. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. They'll come up now, second and four from the 31. He didn't even try to signal for a timeout, so they must have not been aware of the numbers. I think he lost track of the time left in the play clock and probably was trying to read the defense and trying to figure out which play to run and just lost track, and it cost him. Following the delay, here's second and nine. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Carson. 
And they're able to get this one across the 35. A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Well, so much for him being bottled up throughout the day. Finally finds a way to break through and get a really nice gain. The defense have felt great about what they had going. Now they've got to turn their attention to getting it back in that direction. Can they bottle him up again? Because I'd say after that run, confidence is pretty high for him. They run it with Carson. Two yards on the pick up there. It'll be second and eight. You know, despite the score line, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road and just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. And his throw here is incomplete. He was going for the tight end, Nick Vanette. And that takes us from second to third down. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open. And this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. From the shotgun, Wilson. He's got the tight end, Vanette. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, like hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies, unable to get it done. And yeah, that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that, they had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would, because if they were competent up to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. They're throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. Hey, we got a second here. Let's go back to week 15 following the win over Green Bay for Chicago. Happiness rained down on the field. The Bears claiming the NFC North title, but one Bear took his celebration to an extreme. I know you saw this. Yes, I certainly did. Charles Leno Jr., left tackle for the Chicago Bears, got down on a knee and proposed to his girlfriend Jennifer. So not only celebrating an NFC North title, but now his proposal accepted by Jennifer, who will now be Mrs. Jennifer Leno Jr.? No, no junior. <laughs> no junior. By the way, smart move because she's not going to say no in front of 60,000 people. Well, I've seen it happen before. Not pretty, but not in this case. After the penalty, it's Elliott. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Making the stop that time, Bobby Wagner. Well, we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. The Cowboys on third down. And they've been really good, converting seven of their ten tries. Here it's third and two. Out of the gun, here's Prescott. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A pickup of 24 on the third down conversion. to the 40. Sweet little juke in there. Got him some extra yardage. A good run there on first down and it'll leave him with a second and two. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, gotta like the way they're moving the football partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? 
They go to Elliott again. And he'll get it down on the plate of the 37. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. Well, we always talk about good down and distance, allowing offenses to expand their playbook. Well, second and two, that means your playbook's wide open. You can run just about anything. But a lot of times, the play caller, he just looks down at his sheet, sees the short yardage runs, and goes to one of those. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. They go play action here on first down. And that's incomplete. Cole Beasley, the intended target. And it's second down. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. But they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. On second down, here's Smith. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Give him four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get him into a manageable third down because they had the incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. On third down, it's Prescott going up top. And this is caught for a Cowboy touchdown. Three touchdown passes now for Dak Prescott. And the Cowboys will extend their lead. A good sustained drive there in this third quarter, capping it off with a touchdown to give them a nice two-score advantage. It was actually a fun one to watch, wasn't it? I mean, for me, seeing the mix of what they did, how they moved the ball downfield, very sharp, too. Each and every play seemed to be executed with great dispatch. The extra point splits the uprights, and the lead now up to 14. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. They'll start out on the ground with Carson, and he powers his way up past the 30. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. On second down, Wilson. And he almost intercepted it. They haven't picked a ball off yet. That probably should have been their first. And it's third down now. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. From the gun on third down, Wilson. He finds his man, Baldwin. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. Seven yards on the quick slant and a first down. I don't care how many times you tell the story, it never loses its luster for me. Doug Baldwin, undrafted out of Stanford, and plays like a number one receiver should in the NFL. I don't care how you cover him. I don't care that his size isn't great. He's the one that typically comes up with the football. Absolutely. His roots go all the way back to Gulf Breeze, Florida, where he's from, right? On the water near Pensacola. And then, of course, to Stanford. And, boy, he's been good. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. On 
on second down. Here's Wilson. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. Wilson now, five straight completions here in this second half, first and 10. Throwing is Wilson. Now they set up the screen, that's complete. And he's going to get this inside the 30. 17 yards on the pickup there, and the drive will continue. They ran that one well, and not only did they pick up a nice chunk of yardage on the screen, they sent a message to the defense. Rush the passer all you want, but you better be careful. We can hit you going back the other direction. They'll throw on first down with Wilson. Look at this. Wilson hit. It's loose. It's out. Fumble. It's picked up by the Cowboys. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Brandon, I don't want to violate any of our broadcasting rules by declaring a game over before it's over. But that one, that puts him in real jeopardy there. Absolutely. It was a two-possession game. It is a two-possession game at this stage in the fourth. They needed points out of that drop. And obviously now, no chance at all to get those points that they so desperately needed. Another nice pick up through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Throwing, Prescott. He's gonna find Gallup here complete. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh shot of downs. I think it all came together there. In-breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. Back-to-back -back good plays. Have him on the move on first down. They'll pitch it out to Elliott. And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets them to second and four. Uh, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely. You want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. Here's Elliott. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Good yardage as he rumbles for 24 and a first. Uh, he's still rumbling, isn't he? Still looking fresh in this one despite the heavy workload. But you and I both know, well-conditioned, and he did tell us that he thrives on being at his peak late in ball games. Play action to Elliott. Here's Prescott. And this one brought in by Gathers. And down inside the 15 he goes. 11 more yards that go around. A first down as well. Well, clear running situation. Try to take time off the clock. He ran the previous play. Set that play action up nicely. Boy, did they ever because they had shown the ability to run the football. So now you lose your keys as a defense. You dive for the running play. And they hit him over the top. This is Elliott. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Brandon, it's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. 
Staying on the ground. This time it's Smith. And he'll get four there down to about the 12-yard line. They're pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves, start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. This will be the eighth play of the drive. It's third and seven. Prescott from the gun. Pressure comes. He's taken down by the Seahawks defense. Jaron Reed in there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that'll lead to a fourth down. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. And his kick is indeed good. And that will extend their lead even further. So with that, you figure now yeah, this game's pretty much out of reach at this point. Yeah, it's going to take a heck of a comeback to come from three scores down. But don't change that channel. Don't go away. Miracles can happen. And you want to be here in case it does. You're a company man. Now, aren't I, though? Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And the turnover last time, that's sort of been symptomatic of their struggles here in this one. Big word. I like it, though, yeah. because you're exactly you right. Like that, don't you? All game long, they've struggled moving the ball, turning it over on the last possession. Is that word again, symptomatic? Yeah, yeah. I like that. Your analysis, symptomatic of the success of this broadcast. What I like is that you gave me the word, and I just kept using it. <laughs> well, a good first down call as the screenplay gets a nine. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? Maybe a good spot to take a shot. Here's second and a yard from the 34. One out, one out. Shot. Now Wilson on second down toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Tyler Lockett was the target there, and it's third and short. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden a secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. They tried to throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. Now we've got whistles and movement up front. I think this is against Seattle. Well, that's a tough, costly penalty because now it makes it third and six after the false start. From the gun, it's Wilson. He'll have a first down past the 40 and all the way up to the 45-yard line. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. You cannot write these guys off just yet, not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. Now Wilson, quick slant, caught by Moore. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. You can see the time and effort and thought that they've put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Now Wilson on first down. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. The intended target, Mike Davis. And that'll bring up second down. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. 
That one goes incomplete. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Now Wilson throwing again. Under pressure here, and down he goes. Shaq back at about the 43-yard line. Randy Gregory in there to get him for his second sack of the night. Wilson of the Seahawks looking for something big following the sack. It's third and long here. Now it's Wilson. And that is incomplete. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. They're already slim. Hopes are going to ride on this one. They'll go on fourth down. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. He's going to air one out. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Jeff Heath, the strong safety, able to get in there on the coverage. Well, they've clearly made a conscious decision here to be more aggressive in the late stages of this game here in the second half. And I get it. In this situation, you know, if you want to be aggressive out near midfield, you feel good about your defense maybe, or just, hey, I thought I had a proper play call. But how about the guys that just stopped them? How good do they feel right now? Right, you want to go for it here? We shut you down. They're over on the bench right now feeling great. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It'll wind up being a loss of two, and it'll be second and 12. And when do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage, use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And oh, he coughed it up, and the Seahawks have recovered. The psychology of the game never ceases to amaze me because you would think there would never be a fumble from what we hear from coaches all the time, right? And how much they practice not fumbling. Practice it, preach it, talk about it all the time. You would think no one would ever turn it over. Yet they are humans out there running around. And we just saw another one. Opportunistic by the defense. Give them 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give them a first down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end. But running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. On first and ten, it's Wilson. Looking sideline incomplete. I'm not even sure I know who this guy is out there playing right now. This is very unlike him, one of the most accurate guys in the league. Totally off his game right now. I don't know. I was going to ask you what you pin it on, but defensively, they've been pretty solid. Well, sometimes, you know, those defenders, they get into the receivers pretty well, and if they chip away at their timing, it's going to affect what you're doing throwing the ball as well. Again on second and ten, it's Wilson. Wide open receiver complete. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. On first down, Wilson. And this will be incomplete. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. Once again, they'll come up on the 26-yard line, second and 10. Second and 10, it's Wilson again. Baldwin with it over the middle. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. The reception good for seven. It's third down. On third down, 
It's Carson, and this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. It's a loss of a full three yards, and it brings up fourth down. They run for it with Carson, and he won't get there. They stop him a few yards short of the line to gain. Tackle made there by Chidabe Awuzie. So they tried to go for it for pride, but it really wouldn't have mattered. This one, it was already determined. No doubt about it. This one was over a while ago. The fourth down run successful. Now they look to pay it off on first down. Now Elliott. And he goes across the 20 to the 22. Barkevius Mingo in that time on the tackle. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. <laughs> We've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. They'll try the right side with Elliott. And he'll get this up over the 25 to the 26. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. Back-to-back -back four yard runs. Now look, if they just do that all the way down, field ball ends up in the end zone, but that's a little difficult to do. Yeah, I think now third and two, that defense ready to stiffen up and stop that run. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. It's a win for the Cowboys as we sign off and say so long from Arlington.